about Jesus. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We magnify and glorify your name. My Lord and my God, we're about to go into your word. Father, come and teach us yourself. Because the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 89 that your word is settled in heaven. That your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our part. That our Lord increases our understanding. Your word increases our understanding about you. My Lord and my God, as this word will come to us this morning, Father, let it enlighten every darkness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our blessed Redeemer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. See me true, Lord Jesus. See me true, see me true, see me true, Lord Jesus. See me true. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Hallelujah. See me true. Lord Jesus, see me true. See me true. Lord Jesus, see me true. There is a race I must run. I must run. There is a victory to be one. Give me power every hour. To be true. Praise the Lord. Do you know why I love the church of nowadays? Please sit down, man. We do the reverse of what they did during the Bible time. When the preacher preaches during the Bible time, the preacher sits down. It's the congregation that stands up. <laughs> Go and check the book of Nehemiah. Praise the Lord. When you read the book of Nehemiah, you will understand. The preacher will sit down. That the congregation will stand up. But now, the preacher stands up. And the congregation sits down. Even when we are singing. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is well with each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus our topic today says, laying aside every weight. Laying aside every weight. We carry a lot of unnecessary weight. In this, our message today, we are going to look at various things that constitutes weight to us. Various weights that we, we, we carry ourselves without knowing it. And what those weights do to our Christian life and our running in this race that God has called us together to run. Brethren, do we know that the Christian Life is a race that we are running. It is a race. It's not a hundred yards dash. But it's a what? A marathon. It's a long race. You start running that race right from the time you were brought into this world until the time you will depart. So it is a race. 
that we are running. And by the special grace of God, the race that we are running, we are not going to run it alone. Because our God, through Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit of God, will help us to run this race successfully in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Bible text will be taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And um, we'll read from verse 1 and uh, to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. Please, the electronics, you will also help me by projecting so that I will not waste our time by flipping to the pages of my Bible. Say, we are foreseen. We also are compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses. Say, let us lay aside every what? I want us to look in our Bibles or look on the board. I want us to follow this message very, very intelligently. Say, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay our, aside every weight and, sin, and the sin which easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Then verse 2. See, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We'll read some other Bible passages. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says, it reads, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive it the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Say run. Run in such a way. Run this race in such a way that you will not go empty handed. Run this race in such a way that when the roll call will be called, your name will be found in the book of life. Run this race as if your life depends on it, and your life really depends on it. Look at what Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. I'm just giving this background so that we will know where we are going. He said, for I am now, he said, now I have, I have finished my own race. He, in fact, I will say that he had been issued, knew where he was going. See, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. He beat his chest and said, I did well. Can you look at yourself and say, I have done well in this my calling. Can you look at yourself and praise God for your life? Can you look at yourself and say, people, I am an imitator of Christ. So my followers also do as I have done. 
That's what Apostle Paul was telling us. Say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have finished my race that I'm running. You see, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. See, it is not only to me alone, but unto all them also that love is appearing. How many of us love the appearing of Jesus Christ here? Praise the Lord. See, those that love is appearing, that once you complete the race successfully, there is a crown that is waiting for you. For people who complete the race successfully. That's the crown of life. James chapter 1 verse 12. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Say the incorruptible crown. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 20, verse 9 Chapter 9, verse 25. The crown of righteousness. Then the crown of glory. And this one is the one that will interest us even so much. The crown of rejoicing. This crown of rejoicing is for only those people who win souls to the kingdom of God. So when it is called for us to go for evangelism and you are not interested, just know that there will be no crown of rejoicing or crown of exaltation for you as written in Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, say we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for him. What he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So we must run so that we will obtain a crown. Paul was talking to us as if we are athletes. When you are an athlete, or even in our ordinary life, you cannot afford to carry a weight. You cannot. When an athlete wants to engage in any competition, what do they do first? They will get into the gym and do what? And begin to exercise. If you read about all these athletes. They bring some people that will teach them. Even the clothes they wear they make sure that it is as light as ever. The shoes. In fact, when I realize something about weight, is when we travel, especially when you're traveling abroad, you'll be so shocked that these airlines are very serious with measuring of weight. Once it exceeds that weight, they will tell you to go and repack your baggage. In fact, one, day, one time we were traveling and just a little handkerchief just put it on that scale. Your box, the thing will to move. You will think that nothing will happen to the scale. 
I was shocked. But once you take the handkerchief away, the thing will just let even a tissue paper you put it there. Is did that weight that that uh, um, scale is so sensitive to whatever thing that you put on it, and it will either make you to pay excessive luggage, excess luggage, or they let your luggage go without paying. That was when I realized the consequences of carrying excess luggage. So, any athlete that carry, that's carrying excess luggage will not be able to move as fast as he or she would want to. In the same principle, as Christians, if you load yourself with excess luggage, excess baggage, excess weight that ordinarily you should not carry, it will drain down your spiritual life. So weight is any encumbrance. I will define it. Something that trips, trips us out. Any hindrance. For instance, you want to get away from this place and all of a sudden you are wearing a flowing gown. Assuming you are wearing a flowing gown and the gown hangs up or hooks up with something that is heavy and you're dry, dragging that weight as you are moving. What do you think that will happen to your movement? Your movement will be slowed down. So also the weight that will put in ourselves. Weight is bad as long as we are running this our Christian life race. As a runner, we must let go all the weights that we are carrying. We are designed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The weight, when you look at where we read, it was telling us about a cloud of witnesses lay aside every weight and the sin. Say we have a cloud of witnesses that are watching us. When you go, you flip over to chapter 11 you will see those cloud of witnesses. They are there in heaven watching you. They are there in heaven looking at you. I see, whatever thing that you are going through now, we too went through it and we came out victorious. They are there. In Hebrews chapter 11, I call it the book of... Uh, Faith. That's my own definition about that book of Hebrews 11. So it's the book of faith. You will see the cloud of witnesses that are there. The Bible mentioned a lot of them that are there watching us. That thing you think that you are not able to see. We did it. We passed through what you are passing through. And yet, we are here with our crowns. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, weight is not necessarily a sin. The weight that we carry. It's not necessarily a sin. But it's a, wind, it's a hindrance. Weight cannot stop you from moving. Especially in your Christian race. But your growth will be stunted. Wherever, where you want to be as a Christian, you will not get there 
because of the unnecessary weight that we carry. Weight does not stop you from moving, but it slows you down. It impedes your movement when you carry weight. Weight stops you. A weight will stop you from assessing your blessings. And it stops you from moving into the spirit realm. It will stop you because it is a hindrance. It makes your spiritual life to be static. Your spiritual life will just be static. Because you are thinking of this, you are doing that, you are thinking of what will happen to my children, what will happen to my marriage, you know, childlessness, and all that. That is what weight does to us. It slows down our spiritual, physical, and financial progress. Because of weight, the devil that is the God of this world catches up with us. Weight will weigh you down and deprive you from being elevated. When you are saddled with weight. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus Christ tells us, He said, Come, it's an invitation. He said, Come, you, come unto me, all ye that labor and you are heavy laden. You are saddled with weight. Say, and I will give you rest. You see, when you look at the whole Bible holistically, you'll find out that the examples that the Bible writers used were agrarian examples because they are mainly Agricultural people. They are mainly house men. So when you read that very one, very that's the, the Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty eight. See, come on to me. Was talking about cattle. Was talking about um um. What is this thing that carries um um heavy camels? During that very time, it, the camel will be saddled. So the weight on that camel will not allow the camel to move the way the camel moves, will move. Jesus Christ said, come unto me, all ye that are, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So weight is a heavy laden on each and every one of us. So having given examples of what weight is like or what weight will do to us, we are going to look at what constitutes weight in our lives. The weight that we carry. And we'll try to illustrate them with some examples. So as Christians, God wants us to have the kind of attitude and fortitude in running our race of life as an athlete does for running his race. We must run the race faithfully, keeping our focus on Jesus. Then there will be imperishable crown 
for all that finish their race. We are enjoined by that Bible verse to be the best we can be for God and to run the race faithfully. Our family can be a witch to us. Our family can be a weight to us. You see how? Look at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1 and 4. You see that Abraham's family became a weight on him. Say, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, he said unto Abraham, he didn't say unto Abraham and Lot, he just spoke to Abraham. But what did Abraham do? Abraham went with uh, Lot, and Lot became a weight on him. When you read down, let's go to verse 4. When you read down, you see that. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70, 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. He didn't ask Abraham to go with Lot. We ask Abraham to live alone. Some Bible scholars, the way they refer to Lot is that Lot became an excess baggage to Abraham and began to cause all kinds of troubles. But because of Abraham, God blessed Lot and they became prosperous. When they became prosperous, the, Lord, the husband of Abraham and the husband of Lot began to have some problems. Abraham, being the peaceful man that he was, said, Lot, see, look, we will not be here. And be. Remember, during that period, God just kept quiet from Abraham. See, Lot, separate, go. Then Lot looked and found out that the other side is so flourishing. So he said, take. Go. I will remain on the other side. Even though that Lot, Abraham was his uncle. But Lot took the division first before Abraham. So we should watch our relations and watch what we do with our because they can be a hindrance to the call of God in our lives. What about our friends? Our friends and associates can also be a hindrance to us and to our calling. Praise the Lord. When we look at the story of Apostle Paul, at a time in their ministry, John Mark 
became a weight for him. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verse 36 to 41. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15 to 31, to 41. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, 36 to 41. When John Mark became a weight for him, what did Apostle Paul do? He dropped him. I said, no, I can't go with this man because he's a weight. He is going to weigh me down and make me not to fulfill the ministry that God has called me to do. And when he now found out that Barnabas has taken John Mark and rebuilt him in the later part of Paul's ministry, he requested for John Mark the word that he used was that I don't think that your mark is profitable to my ministry. Say, I will drop him. I don't want him, I don't want to associate with him again. Our ministry can be a weight. The ministry that God has called us can be a waste, a weight. On us. Especially when we saddle ourselves with a lot of responsibilities in the church. You, are, you belong to this committee. You belong to the other committee. You belong to the other fellowship. You, you wrap yourself up with a lot of activities in the church. That can also be a weight to us. The cares of this life, the cares of this life can constitute a weight on us. The cares of this life can constitute a weight on us. Look at what happened to Lot's wife. When warning came for her to move away from Sodom and Gomorrah, she looked back because she preferred that type of life to the life that is in front of her. And there are other forms of weight that we carry. Let us open to Galatians, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 8. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. See, but now you also put off all this anger. Anger is a weight that we carry. Anger is a weight. That we carry. Rot is a weight that we carry. Malice, blasphemy, then filthy communication out of your mouth. Where do you go? Who do you communicate with? 
Who do you associate with? All those things are weights that we carry. Let us look at the issue of anger. Wait, anger is a definition of who you are. At any, the slightest provocation, you are angry. You want to pull down heaven. It will stop you from entering into your destiny. That's what weights do. It's a part of your mentality. It will stop you. It will weigh you down and deprive you from being elevated. Anger can cheat you out of your calling by God. Anger, just a moment of anger. Then wrath is an advanced level of anger that cannot stop you from assessing the throne of grace. That's a form of weight that we carry. Then malice. Malice. According to that, Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. Every time you are carrying a hateful feeling, between your friends and you. And most of the time, they, don't even, they will not even know that you have that type of hateful feeling. You joke with them this, period, this, this time. Then they, immediately, they turn their, their back. You are maligning them and speaking hatefully against them. Blasphemy. Filthy communications. Idle and unprofitable. Non-productive. The Bible says that by your words, you are justified. And by your word, you are condemned. Another form of weight that we carry is anything, anything. It can be, it can reach from thought, mentality. And where you get your influence from could be from social media, from Facebook. Anything that weighs you down is a weight that you're carrying. Too much worry of what will become of you, of what will come of you, of what will come of your children, will become a very big burden that you're carrying. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ is our burden bearer. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. So when we laid down the weight that we are carrying, 
we must put on something. But before we go to that, we'll look at some other weights that we carry unnecessarily. Number one, unforgiveness. Bitterness. Not exercising spiritual maturity. It's a waste that we are carrying. Another waste that we carry is our lackadaisical attitude towards the things of God. We are careless about the things of God. No passion for the things of God. Remember what David said. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. If we lay aside all the weights, then we must put on something. Number one, we must put on tender mercy. Compassion, kindness for. Because when we are doing that, we are pleasing God, our maker. Let us look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Say, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. We must put on and wear the, spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Then what are the consequences of not laying aside our weights. You will lose the peace with God, your peace with God. You will lose the peace of God because of the weight that we carry. And we will also lose the peace with our fellow men. No one wants to associate with someone who carries a lot of baggage and a lot of weight. The Holy Spirit will depart from you because it is the Spirit of truth and a Holy Spirit. Your prayer life will dwindle, come down. Because of weights that we carry. You will never experience an overflowing joy. No joy unspeakable that will come to you. you will lose relationship with God and also relationship with man when we keep on carrying weight. The fire of God will never flow through you as a result of the weight that we carry. 
especially when you carry the weight of worry. A lot of things that can be a weight to you. What is a weight to you may not be a weight to another person. But the truth of the matter is that every weight weighs you down. Then finally, it says, you will never complete the race which is set before you because of the weight that you're carrying. Then when you cannot complete the race successfully, you will miss heaven because of the weight. And that is why Apostle Paul tells us in that scripture that we just cited, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, We are foreseeing we also are compassed about so great a cloud of witness, witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. The weight of unbelief. Every weight. The weight of friends, the weight of families. The weight of too many things to do. You will be here, you will be there, you will be on the last, and then you will not concentrate on the calling of God before you. It draws down your spiritual temperature, brings it down, and slows you down in this race that is set before each and every one of us. And my prayer this afternoon is that every weight that we brought into this place today will drop all of them at the feet of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for another time in your presence. My Lord and my King, help each and every one of us to shed every weight that does not have anything or that is not relevant to our calling, that is not relevant to the heavenly race that we are running. My Father, we cannot do it all by ourselves. Weight of worry. Weight of family. Weight of what we are going to eat. Weight of business is going down. Weight of lack of concentration. Father, the grace to continually look unto you because you are the author and finisher of our faith. Weight of family burdens. Father, deliver us from each of these weights in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our blessed Redeemer. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.